Hello everyone, this is Stas and welcome to my new Touch Designer tutorial and this tutorial called Distancing or uh, Distance Based Instancing because you know the distancing is a such an important word this year, unfortunately and actually I was inspired by uh, line material where as you probably know you could set uh, different uh, colors or different scale depending on uh, how far away your points is or your line is and here i made the same thing but uh, without line mat and actually i could also for example s switch to another instance and as you could probably see uh, the cubes uh, in near the camera is still and the cubes far away is rotating and you could do uh, different stuff and I would talk through it yeah so uh, let's start let's start and let's create a new component and actually new container sorry I call it record and actually, uh, since, uh, since I was inspired by uh, line material, my initial approach was to do everything in GLSL. But lately, I discovered that there is a much simpler way of doing this and with about the same efficiency as GLSL. So right now, we would do this thing without any GLSL and i would use the box for the demonstration because box is nice and very uniform but of course you could use any other geometry or point clouds or something else but uh, let me do with box like uh, 10 by 10 by 10 so 1000 points 1000 points and uh, we need to convert it to chop and if you press alt plus n button you could add a null we call this uh, position and let's make a render setup as a base for our geometry would we would use a sphere and right now i'm holding my shift key so i could choose a sphere then i could choose the switch switch and then i need the geometry okay and now i have connected nodes maybe maybe you didn't know this trick and this is, trick is very nice just hold the shift key and connect everything and let's call it a template because it would be a template for our instances and uh, again for demonstration uh, purpose only I would prefer to use the arcball camera because it's easier to rotate and do other stuff so I grab the camera from this component and delete the component itself and I also like to set the light as a child of camera so light would always uh, would be directed in the same direction as my camera and for setting the arcball camera we need uh, to do a couple of things first of all we need to have a render everything is rendered and mostly i do my video in instagram so i'm already a very big fan of square format so let's make it a square and let's add a null and let's call it out out and to make arcball camera work uh what's going on something is strange okay um okay i'll fix it later and we will look at out and we also need to 
Not need, but it would be much more convenient if we turn on all mouse buttons. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Gear viewer is not defined. Uh, let me make it one more time. A five by five by five. Sorry for that. I'm not sure what's go what's happening, but okay. Ah, uh, gear viewer. Where are you, gear viewer? Oh, okay. Now it's working. Oof. Okay. And let's turn on instancing and put. Uh, this chop as instance position and this here is way too big let's make it smaller probably point I think even smaller yeah it's nice and I like the make it face it so I add a face it and unique points, compute normals, and we need to switch it to polygon and maybe three, or maybe, I don't know. Let's make it three. Okay, all right, and uh, now, is it turn on? Uh, let's turn on auto rotate. Okay, and Let's make it rotate, maybe like this. And turn on our top viewer. Oh no, it's way too fast. You would be dizzy, so let's make it, yeah, like this. Okay. I'll show you how to do it with the camera, but you can do it with the light, with the light or with a null or with anything else uh, we need uh, let me also switch to RGB so I don't have alpha channel it looks much better now and we need the object object chop object where you here you are object and this object chopped could uh, provide the different information about uh, different objects. And we have the camera as our target object. And we interested basically now about uh, only position. So the X, the Y and the Z. And here we have our position for every instance. So we could uh, calculate the distance between every of our points and our camera uh, we need uh, um, not, uh, another object maybe I'll connect it in uh, wrong order but maybe I'll fix it later if it's a wrong order not sure and here we need uh, again the measurements and we need only distance and by default the distance chop is set only to one sample but we need uh, 1000 samples so uh, we could set it manually uh, let's switch to samples and uh, we could say we could use our uh, SOP uh, as our as number of our instances not instances but uh, yeah the points for instances uh, la, 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 la. we need uh, the operator box one comma 
number points yeah and now it's working and you should also subtract the one so in the end you have um, 1000 samples the same as 1000 here because uh, if you set it like this and put it into for example scale it would say that all operators must generate the same amount of instances have the same length and to have oops and to have same length you need to subtract one okay and uh, what I also like to do is to put the to analyze chop analyze analyze uh, I call it max and I call this min and guess what I want here the minimum and here maximum and uh, since now we have uh, the distance from our camera to different of our points it's starting from 8 something to almost 16 like here but depending on what we're working on uh, usually you don't want your scale to be between this and this values so you need to rearrange this and my approach is to make a math and call it uh, dist uh, norm which means distance normalized and I put uh, the maximum value here and the minimum minimum value here and so now I arrange it from 0 to 1 but it's not always the thing the case you want to use because uh, right now if I move my camera away it still would be between 0 and 1 and sometimes uh, so it's relative distance but sometimes you want the absolute distance and then you don't need to do this and you need to rearrange it manually but anyway it's nice to see the minimum and the maximum distance and now I would use this uh, uh, this chop as a template for different parameters let's first do the scale I'll use the select select I use this chop as a select and uh, again I need the math to rescale it for example I want my scale from 0. Point, uh, maybe I don't want to disappear it completely so 0. 0.1 to 1 and again add a null call it scale you could also rename the variable but I don't bother so dist 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 and now we have our basic effect the distance is based on the camera position and no matter how I move my camera so maybe in, right now it's uh, easier to show you for example if I set uh, here range from 10 to 30 now it's depend if I close up my camera the it becomes closer so all the points become smaller and if I move far away everything becomes bigger so this is the difference between the uh, fixed the absolute range or the relative range where no matter how I move my camera close or far away it's still the scale is still from 0 to 1 okay this is our scale good uh, and maybe you will experience some FPS drops it's mostly not because the calculation it's usually because the 
chops these graphics uh, took a lot of CPUs and the distance calculation itself it's well it's pretty large but not so much uh, like it's about 0 0.7 milliseconds and you have uh, 1000 milliseconds in one second divided by 60 fps to, if you want to still have 60 fps so you could spend quite a lot of it and still get a real-time result okay uh, next let's do the colors let's do the colors or uh, what do we want for our colors we need a uh, Mm -hmm. Let me think. We could convert our distance uh, to a top and set it error, yeah, on the air and pixel format uh, 32 bits mono because it's mono. So now we have our distance here and we could use the lookup uh, and the ramp for coloring this way. Uh, lookup. And we need the ramp. Ramp. And the values here is doesn't matter, but I prefer to use something like this so we have a 1000 uh, the range from the darkest to the lightest and again uh, 32 bits float and now it should be RGB or RGBA for our ramp and by the way we forgot to set our material you could use any material I would use a phone because it's simple okay phone and uh, for colors let's go from uh, something orangey to something bluish like this just uh, my favorite contrast colors from orange to dark blue uh, and here we need to set the pixel format as 32 bits okay and again it's also the size of 1000 so the same size and let's make a new let's call it color color and let's set it as a color instance color r g b -E. and uh, in line mat you, you could set only two colors line near color or point near color and point far color but here with the ramp you could set uh, a whole range of colors for example you could set uh, the medium to something like this so three colors or more okay good now let's do for example let's do for example uh, noise noise in position because maybe you would like the points the far away uh, as i showed earlier it was a rotate much more but now i have a different idea what if it will move a little bit in different directions so let's uh, make a noise noise and we need uh, 1000 samples 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 999 so everything fine and let's call it t x y z t x t y t z and let's transform it a little bit seconds okay 
Now we have our noise. And if we multiply our noise with our distance, let's select it again. Select. And if we multiply it, uh, combine chops, multiply. So now the noises in uh, for the instances which are near the camera, the noise would be zero because uh, it multiplied by zero. And the uh, noise far away, it would be bigger. And let's add this noise to our position. And maybe next we will fix a little bit. Okay, it looks nice, but it's way too slow uh, multiplied by uh, oops multiplied by five maybe yeah and now it's a little bit hard to see because the camera is moving so if i stop the camera you could see that the orange uh, spheres especially this uh, very small one which near the camera almost didn't move and the spheres far away moves a lot and of course you could reverse it by doing something like uh, insert operator math uh, you could just add minus one uh, no you want one minus this uh, distance so it could be minus one and then positive uh, positive. Am I right? Yay! And now the the spheres near the camera moves a lot, and the spheres far away, especially over there, which we couldn't see because it's far away from our camera, don't move uh, at all. And uh, you could use the same approach for the for doing the rotation. And uh, another thing I want to show you, it's uh, you could do it with a texture as well. Actually, I don't like this moving effect, so let's delete this. Oh, no, I'll just leave it to you. Or uh, I will provide this file on my Patreon for Patreon users, of Patreon supporters and Thanks a lot for everyone who supported me making these tutorials. And if you want to have this file and don't reconstruct it by your own, you could support me as well. And again, to save some FPS, let's turn off this. And let me show you the similar effect with the texture because it's a little bit more tricky but not so much uh, let's m use uh, rectangle or box Let let's let's use box why not let's switch to boxes it's a way too big which uh, it's 0.5 so about 0.5 okay and uh, We would like to use the constant material for the texturing and we don't need any colors. Oops, uh, okay, let's leave it right now with this. Uh, for example, I could show it uh, with um, the counter we have somewhere. Okay, count move. Let's fit it to square because our box is a square, fit vertical, now we have a, squ a square, and we need to use the texture 3D, texture 3D, and let's say we have, so it counts uh, from zero to 100, so let's have a 100 cache. And, uh, we don't want to calculate it every frame, 
So we could deactivate it and prefill it. Prefill it. And uh, again, we could set uh, a null and use this as a texture. Okay, probably we would need to use that uh, texture here to set uh, right direction. Okay, now I start seeing some numbers here. Uh, right now maybe we don't need to do any scaling. So everything would be the same scale, just to see the numbers better. In the texture you could uh, experiment with the where it would be how, how the texture would project on the boxes I'll just right now leave it like uh, somewhere where is it okay leave it here and I also don't want any coloring okay so right now for the all um, Oh, it's also because because I don't set any texture uh, texture coordinate, and we need uh, since it's texture three D, we could use the W to set uh, which one of a texture we want, and it goes from zero to one. So we could use just uh, distance normalized here. Oops something record distance attribute do, 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 do. oh sorry we don't need to of course of course of course uh, here is the distance normalized and uh, here we need a distance so now uh, if everything is set correctly as you can see the the texture the numbers here it's uh, inversed let's try to find something better no, not XYZ position perspective from camera no not good Ah, probably the orthographic works better. Anyway, you need to set it uh, manually and experiment with the texture. But what I wanted wanted to show you is that right now the texture, the depth peel of this texture, it depends on the distance to our camera. So as you can see, the numbers is different. It's not uh, in the right order because we don't have the right order here and maybe you would like to use some different movie file in but uh, I hope you get the idea that you could how you could set the texture depending on the distance from the camera okay uh, let's actually put everything back put everything back and uh, let's don't use any texturing and where I set my scale from 0 0.1 okay so that's basically it but what I also wanted to show you is that you don't uh, need to use the camera you could use the light or just the new or something else for example in this pre-made pre-made version i have set up with a light so if i in the object chop in the first object i set instead of camera say it a light now uh, everything it's depending on my lighting took dependency loop but doesn't matter 
uh, you could watch it better with the geometry viewer uh, where is my light because I have two lights oh here's my light here's my light and as you could see as you can see the scaling and uh, and other effects depending on the light position uh, the interesting question though is how to use the cone light it's right now it's my goal to use advantage of this uh, cone angle and cone delta and the rotational information because in the object job we could have a rotation as well and could have a bearing as well which uh, in in the theory could provide enough information to make uh, not the distance from point to point but also depending on the light cone uh, i just wanted to show you my experiment it didn't work because uh, you need a lot of calculation but at least uh, it's a proof that it's possible here i uh, change uh, some noise of uh, of my instances depending on the light cone and if I change my cone delta it also depends uh, unfortunately it doesn't work as I want so I'm not uh, I wouldn't share this example because uh, yeah it didn't work and and it's everything is made in gel cell and uh, i'm not uh, good enough in calculating it's all about calculating actually the dot product but i couldn't find the right uh, formula for calculating dot product dot product is the angle from uh, so basically what we want is the where our light is positioned where our light is directing and what is the angle and from this we could say we could find the values for for our um, something for our effect color or noise or whatever but it's neat but i need to understand the mathematics about vectors much better to able to do this but if you're good in math uh, give it a try i hope you will succeed in this light cone but even without the cone lighting it still could produce very interesting result and especially i like this uh, kind of illusion because you could see the cube, cube is rotating and you expect to see the better, the bigger and bigger cubes, but it's not and it's create some, it's not an optical illusion, but something, yeah, something strange. So this is it for this tutorial. I hope you like it. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not. Uh, or subscribe to my Instagram where I posted all of my video experiments. You could find uh, this file and other examples on my Patreon. And thank you, goodbye, and that's it.